Hey guys, it's Keith Grevenitz with the Beat Sessions. Your buddy, remember me from the comment section? Keep it nice, guys, keep it nice. Well, here I am tonight bringing you my top 10, and I'm going to start out with Willie Nelson, A Beautiful Time. Willie Nelson really hit me with this album. It's it's just about, for me as a musician, it's about the, the musical standards and country music if done right if done without all the poppiness and without all the overproducedness of it it just sounds so warm and makes a musician feel good so i loved it but now here's number nine with placebo never let me go placebo you guys might remember them a friend in needs a friend indeed a friend with weed is better well this album, many years later, was very chill, a very smooth, alternative, punkish uh, type of sound, and I liked it a lot. With number eight, I'm coming in with Brandon Boyd with Echoes and Cocoons. I've always loved Brandon Boyd and Incubus, and it's cool to hear Brandon Boyd without the influence of Mike Einzinger, who I think is an outstanding guitarist, and he certainly fills a lot of that space with Incubus. But this was a really cool album with a lot of spacey sounds. It really sounds like Brandon Boyd put his time into it and made a very creative album. Coming in with number seven is Brian Eno with Forever and Ever No More. It's hard to really put into words what Brian Eno does as a musician. He brings you to a place. He brings you to a time. He evokes emotion from you. And through the most interesting sounds, this guy has been doing it for decades. And Forever and Ever No More was no different. It was outstanding and it was definitely interesting. Coming in at number six is the Arctic Monkeys with the car. The car came out of nowhere and surprised the hell out of me. It was a super cool album. Alex Turner made a retro 1970s loungy feel throughout this one. It doesn't get too crazy. It stays all real down and low and mellow and I really like that kind of music. Alex Turner is a super talented musician. You guys should give this one a listen. Number five is Snarky Puppy with Empire Central. Snarky Puppy would have had to try really hard not to make my top 10 list. These guys are extremely talented, the most talented. Michael League is a great band leader and Empire Central is no different than any other Snarky Puppy album, except that I was missing the extreme talent of uh, Corey Henry or something like that. It, it, there's just so much talent in there that it just blends all together, and but it's fantastic. Number four, I'm going to go with Beach House, Once Twice Melody. Beach House has emerged as one of my new favorite bands, and it's almost a guilty pleasure because they're so simple. I had the pleasure of seeing them live this early this uh, this month in December up in Phoenix, and it was rain. It rained for two days, so I stood in the mud to watch these guys, and it was an amazing show. But if I had one comment, I would say I would like them to bring a whole band and play the music that is on the album instead of playing a backing track. However, these guys are amazing, and I will be looking forward to their next release. Number three, I'm coming in with The Smile, A Light for Attracting Attention. I don't know if you know this about me, but I may be a little bit of a Tom York fanboy. So when The Smile, a little different arrangement came out with Tom York, and pretty much the only difference was you have Tom Skinner on the drums, and Tom Skinner is a jazz drummer, and I really expected something a little different. But it was kind of like he was just filling in for Phil Selway of Radiohead. But this album was great. It had, you know, of course, a lot of Tom. And it was very Radiohead-esque. It was a nice off-season Radiohead album for me. Coming in with number two is Built to Spill, When the Wind Forgets Your Name. Built to Spill was in my periphery for many years. After all, they were a band that was around when... Kurt Cobain of Nirvana and Pearl Jam and, you know, all these great 
Seattle grunge rock bands. Built to Spill was right there. Doug March, he started off making a band that would rotate in different members for each album. And then he had a pretty consistent team for a little while. And now he's back to rotating members in. And the music is great. It, it has survived all the death and tragedy of that grunge movement. And it's worth a listen to if you're into that kind of thing. Now, down to my number one with the Mars Volta. The Mars Volta. Now, I've listened to the Mars Volta since day one. Big D Loust fan. Um, and I was excited to review the Mars Volta, the Mars Volta this, this year. Uh, it was an exciting album. It had some more chill vibes. It came down from outer space, as I said. Um, I loved Shore Story. Uh, it was. It felt to me almost like it was R and B in this Mars Volta album. I really liked it. Um, the album was produced by um, Omar Rodriguez Lopez again, and he did a fantastic job. Uh, Cedric, Cedric Bixler Zavala, his voice is incredible. His songwriting is still tops. This is an album that really had me listening to it on repeat this year. I loved it. I love the Mars Volta, and I'm excited to see what they come out with next. Hey, guys, I want to thank you for listening to my top 10 this year. Um, I hope you have a chance to listen to some of this music. And I'm really looking forward to 2023 and what awaits us. Anyway, guys, thanks for listening. I'm Keith Grevenitz with The Beat Sessions, bringing you my top 10 of 2022. Thanks.